Mm. Mm. Hi. Welcome to episode three of Go Low Like a Pro. Now, last week, Gary Wilson home said that at this time of year, when the weather's like this outside, we should all really focus on going back to sleep. No, 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 I didn't. He said we should focus on putting. <sighs> putting, putting, putting. So let's go do some putting. Oh, come on, darling. Come on. Time to get up. Oh, ain't none of that. I need you for this. The next drill from Phil Kenyon's five day putting challenge focuses on how you should grip the putter. Now obviously, as you know, there are so many different variations on grip, but from what I remember, Phil focused mostly on this one. And what you might remember is that this drill led to a change in how I grip my other clubs. So let me show you what I've taken from Phil's challenge on how to grip the putter. It's super simple, basically he says you should be gripping the putter along your lifelines. Now you might remember that's these lines here, through your palm, at the base of your thumb. I don't seem to have a life. But we're in a lockdown, no one does. Now this is basically the opposite of what I'm doing with my irons. So when I'm gripping the putter, I take my left thumb place it on the R and I lay the lifeline along the shaft of the putter, wrap the fingers in grip, and do the same with the right hand. I'm going to lay my right thumb along my left onto the shaft, then wrap the fingers in grip. And I still like to have um, my index finger pointing down the shaft. And that is essentially the grip. The next part of this is, if you bring the putter head up like this, uh, there are two things you can do. You can do this. I need you to guide my sword. Please. Guide my sword. but it won't help you putting. The other thing you can do that will is this. You're looking for a bit of ulnar deviation in your wrist and what you want is a straight line from your elbow through your forearm down the shaft to the putter head. Now throw in your 45 degree tilt and then you're all set. I'm still doing my 100 putts a day this week but Gary suggested adding in an element of pressure in that if I don't make a certain number of putts in a row, I have to start again until I do. So I've got rid of the cups, we're still at five feet. It's all about the coaster, which is four inches wide. A putting hole is 4.25, so it's pretty close. And all I've got to do is go one better than the old firm and get 10 in a row. Ooh, a wee cliffhanger. Right, here are the numbers for the week. I had a pretty bad day on the 15th, but got things back on track after that. It's much easier to see on the graphs and what's interesting here is that the green line for right cups hit doesn't ever move that much and that the blue and red lines are almost a reflection of each other which means that I'm missing roughly the same amount right and that the difference between good and bad numbers going through is mostly about me reducing those pulls to the left. The dotted trend lines however, especially the blue, are still going in the right direction. And lastly, a new table to show my pressure putts. No more cliffhanger. I didn't start until day 16. But as you can see, I'm pretty awesome at streaking. That's 100% success. I could almost be a professional streaker at that distance. Although I'd like to be further away. Maybe I will show you some of me streaking next week. 
One of the things Gary suggested when it comes to practicing your chipping, especially when you're in lockdown or the weather's like this, is just to come to your living room and practice hitting chips into your sofa. Now, I'm only doing this out of curiosity because I am not very confident that this isn't going to go really, really badly. I just have a vision. I'm going to end up squaffing a chip, have it rebound off the wall and end up heading straight for the TV. I'm going to go full on Andy Gorham trying to save it and end up launching this into the mirror at the same time. Right. You know, I have a garden. I am lucky enough to have a garden. So there is absolutely no reason to do this at all. You know, the weather actually isn't too bad today either. It is really not too shabby. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. You know that feeling you get when you're standing over a putt and you just know that it's not going in? You've got zero confidence. You might have missed four or five already in the round and you just know that it is not going to end well. Yeah, I'm going to the garden. Now, for the most part, I'm still just practicing my chipping. Um, I've set up the targets, as Gary said, but I'm still really just trying to get a feel for my new clubs, trying to feel how the ball comes off the club face. Now, there is still a huge inconsistency in the quality of my chipping strikes, and I think that comes down to a huge inconsistency in my chipping stroke. So next week, I'm going to start looking for a tip or a drill or something that I can use to actually start improving my chipping rather than just practicing my chipping. If you've got one, chuck it in the comments. Now you see that orange ball? In a minute, I'm going to try and hit that ball off the swing frame and bounce it back into the white basin. Ooh, so close. Who would have thought that last chip would have went so well? This is the end of part one. I'm away off to get some practice in, so hopefully I shall see you in part two. Till then, be good, and if you can't, shout for.